Hello and welcome to another Python Mathematics and Stock Indicators tutorial video. In this video we're going to be discussing the center of gravity, but actually the indicator center of gravity. Now if you look up the formula for this, you're going to get something uh, pretty similar to this, although this one's actually incorrect because it doesn't have the uh, negative sign in front of it. You are supposed to uh, get a negative sign there so you reverse or you kind of flip the chart itself, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So the center of gravity uh, indicator uh, originates from this article by John F. Ehlers. And the idea of it is to exhibit really no lag at all. And that's kind of what it's known for is it's an indicator that really has no lag. Now, uh, this is the calculation. It's hopefully a little bit easier to understand. But then if you still don't get it, when we go to program it, I think it'll be really quite simple. So the calculation is, you know, um, the idea of it is really, I would ignore this part and just say like it's n times price or n times price n, right? And so generally you might have 10 days or something like that is usually what you're going to use. So if it's 10 days and n is 10, then it's 10 times price number 10, right? And 10 being 10 days ago, not, you know, yesterday or whatever. Uh, so then with that, you would do 1 through 10 just like that, and then you divide it by the price in that again. So, and then don't forget the, the um, negation of the entire thing uh, so it actually works out uh, the way that we want it to. So with that, let's go ahead and see some examples of what happens when you chart this. So let me go ahead and pull it up. Let's go here. Uh, the first one we can look at, we'll look at eBay. And so here's an example of center of gravity for eBay. It's on the bottom uh, indicator there, right here. And so as you can see, there's very little to no lag at all. And if anything, it's actually a leading indicator in, in many instances here. Um, so a good example of when it's actually a leading indicator would be uh, right here, where, I mean, it hits the absolute bottom possibly here, you would think, but actually the real absolute bottom is here, but it's already begun moving up as far as the center of gravity was concerned, and sure enough it is, and then you can see just every time it comes down, I mean, this has it just, boom, like right, <laughs> right on. Um, so it's actually pretty cool. I mean, obviously there's gonna be times where it's not as that perfect. Um, trying to find a time where there's a lot of fluctuations that I could show that. Uh, like here for it would be an example where it's like this is it's saying the peak is here and then it starts going down but it's missing it because it went up um, but for any of these like long rides you know like this one was a really good one um, this one here was also where it said the peak or the bottom was here you know and it goes up so kind of an interesting indicator it's a lot like um, you'll see that it follows the RSI pretty well um, but where the RSI says, hey, this is like where the RSI says, hey, if it gets below 30, that's oversold. Uh, the center of gravity is telling you, nope, that's like where the where it wants to be right now. And then when it starts coming up, then um, then you're interested, you know. So they do they are they are different for sure, but you'll see that they follow very similar paths quite often. So. Um, it would be a good, uh, it's kind of a good combination to use with RSI in my opinion because when they are following the same path you can ignore it and then when they're not um, then you might want to listen to the RSI at least. So uh, with that, that's the uh, center of gravity indicator. A lot of times you'll see it with the bands and we might end up doing one with the bands uh, on the price eventually but for now like this is the official one. You, there's also like you know, center of gravity bands that you can put but really that's mostly um, kind of like a combination of the center of gravity plus um, Bollinger Bands, like the same kind of theory going into those. So we can eventually do that. We have done Bollinger Bands, and so you could do, you just apply Bollinger Bands to this, and then you normalize it by putting it on here. Usually like a percent change uh, would do it. Uh, and there's also a couple other ways that you can do it, like with logarithm and stuff. But anyway, uh, we might get to that eventually, but this is just the simple center of gravity. So with that, uh, in the next video, what we're going to be talking about is actually how to program that within Python. And then in the next video, we'll actually chart it up just like this, and you guys can play with it yourself. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and subscriptions. And until the next video.